Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? So, um, why weren't we going to get an earlier start? <laughs> man, I'll tell you, work's, work's a mess right now, man. Sometimes, man. I had a pallet collapse. <laughs> the whole pallet collapsed. How does that even happen, man? I... I don't, I don't really know. I never really... <laughs> well, let me tell you, when you shove Aren't they a... wrapped? It was wrapped. Uh... It was wrapped good. It was wrapped so well when it collapsed, it was even more of a mess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we would have got an earlier start, but work happens, man. Yeah. Well, if it makes you feel any better while you were picking up the pallet, um, I accidentally dumped a whole bunch of cat food on my kitchen floor. Ha! Well, I had heck. to clean all that up. And they're like tiny little pieces. Little pieces, yeah. Well, at least mine was big boxes. It still took a while, though. <laughs> <laughs> About halfway through it, I was debating on just leaving them there. Actually, I, I got a broom. It took me like less than 10 minutes. It was fine. Oh, <clears throat> yep. But hey. Couldn't clean yours up with a broom? No, no. It wasn't going to happen. Right. Luckily, I didn't need a broom. Like, there wasn't anything that was broken or a mop. That's uh, really. That could have been bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> If it had not been a frozen pallet, if it had been a cooler pallet, I would have had juice and stuff everywhere. Uh, So things could always, it just goes to show, things could always be worse. There's some point where it can't get worse. (laughs) Is there? Yeah, there is a worst. (laughs) There is a worst scenario. Yeah. You know, knock on wood, I don't think I've ever found myself in a worst scenario. I've always been able to look at a scenario and be like, eh, it could always be worse. Yeah. So I I I pray it never happens. That reminds me of... um, so my brother and I were in uh, Santiago, Chile, uh, yeah. years ago now, more than a decade ago. Now, golly, I'm, it's been a, a long time ago. Um, 2006 is yeah. when that was. Uh, so we were down in Santiago, Chile, and um, it was really, I mean, like, we went down there to learn stuff, uh, but it was really, like, a two-week bender. A fun trip. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I learned stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But... Uh, so you know, every after all our classes were done, um, every night we went out. We went out drinking with the people from the classes and people that we met, and you know the host family that we stayed with, and you yeah. know various people you've met yeah. groups. Um, and uh, so we were coming. It was, it was probably two, three in the morning, and uh, we were going back to the to the place where we were staying, the host family. And uh, it was raining a little bit, but not a lot. Um, but it had been raining really good earlier. Oh, yeah. And I, so just to warn you, I don't know if it's true of all of South America, but it was certainly true in, in Chile. Um, like you have to walk out, watch out for traffic. There doesn't <laughs> seem to be any kind of yield for they pedestrians. Don't, they don't kind watch of for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and the buses are the worst. Oh, like, really? Those are the people that you really got to get out of the way of. The give, public give. transportation, they are not stopping for anything. So um, we were, uh, we came to the side of the road. And um, and there was a bus coming, three o'clock in the morning. It was the only car on the road, but you know we, we stopped. <laughs> yeah, <right>. not, <laughs> not, not taking any chances, yeah. right? Um, and so the bus drove by. I don't know if they did this on purpose or not, but he went right through this puddle that had lined up against the the curb uh, and just soaked us. Oh like, man! Like splash across. <laughs> and so my first reaction was to start cursing. Like I was really irritated. I look over my brother and he's just smiling. Like, <laughs> and, and I, so I gave him an odd look, and he's like, man, come on. you got to admit, that's funny. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and he's not wrong, man. Yep, and I, I had to admit, yep, yep. it was funny. It was. And so my mood turned around on it immediately. There and I think are. about that whenever I get really irritated. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. now. Absolutely, man. Sometimes I stick with the irritation. <laughs> sometimes, but, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's hard to overcome that. But Hey, luckily, in this case, yeah. now, in that particular night, the whiskey came before the incident. But ah. tonight, we've got <laughs> hey, whiskey afterwards, afterwards, right? Absolutely. So, on to all the wonderful things going on in the world. Yeah, right. Speaking um, of disasters. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> So I mean I guess we may as well start where we left off more or less with this yeah. uh, with Syria the Syria withdrawal oh with, yeah withdrawal. Um, <laughs> Mike's using quotes there. Yeah, Air quotes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> now this is where the rest of the government kind of starts to show its true colors. I'm yeah. on board with the moving troops out of anywhere. Oh yeah. Okay. Anytime. Like anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they uh, the House passed a resolution to condemn the withdrawal from Syria. Uh, 354 wow. to 60. Wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 438 people, 414 voted. 
and only 60 of them dissented yeah that's insane yeah. now i will what irritates me about that is so they can do this to to say oh well we don't approve of this move and blah 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 but this war isn't even like hasn't even been through congress no. and i guarantee you if you put it to a vote in congress you couldn't get that many votes to go mm-hmm. well and all democrats that voted supported the bill to condemn the withdrawal yeah um nancy pelosi came out and said that the house has a right to be informed and to make decisions on national security but to yeah. your point they didn't demand they to did. vote on going into syria yeah exactly like so i don't, I don't know where she uh where she thinks that you know the, they can the, yeah where the votes going to come from yeah. i mean because if they could if they had the votes they'd do it all right. right oh i mean i would assume well it, i i don't even know uh the whole point is here in this particular case and i think with most of their they have totally abdicated responsibility for this oh absolutely it, it is their responsibility in the constitution to approve war yeah. um the uh president is only the commander in chief when war has been declared by Congress. Yep. All right. Uh, until then, he's that. not the commander in chief of nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, so it, it is the responsibility of Congress to declare war, and then it is the responsibility of the president to conduct it. Yep. Um, this is what makes a difference between a president and a king. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Like a king can both declare and conduct war, yeah. a president can only conduct war, yeah. relying on the people's house. To declare it. To declare it, absolutely. And it was set up that way intentionally. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Now, the reason they're not doing it is because it would cost them votes, whether they voted for or against. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Um, because the people don't want this war. Yeah. Uh, So they're they're concerned about how it would impact their future um, campaigns. Yep. And so that's why they they don't take part in this. Oh, absolutely. Um, Of course, at the same time, they did vote to withdraw funds from the... Uh, Yemeni conflict. Um, really? th- they voted a while back to uh, to no longer provide funds to Saudi Arabia to conduct the Yemeni war. Yeah. Um, and the president vetoed it. Now, so this is a complete role reversal, but they didn't really complain about that either. Yeah. And I shouldn't have worn long sleeves in here. I know now. <laughs> um, Lessons learned. So there's been a lot of talk, though, about how um, how the president did this. That it was just like it was very yeah. sudden. Yeah. Uh, although there's been some evidence that he'd been talking to people beforehand. Oh, there, yeah. I mean, I'm the sure Russians were ready that. to move in. The Syrians were ready to move in. Yeah. Um, so the ground, think, in all likelihood, the groundwork had been laid. Yeah, uh, that's likely true. Um, but even if not, um, <coughs> I, I don't remember if it was in an interview I heard with him or um, if it was in one of the articles he wrote, but uh, retired Major, major uh, Danny Sherson, yeah. um, who writes for... Uh, uh, total war or anti-war, anti-war yeah. um, and uh, uh, what truth dig maybe or something. I don't remember what the other publication that he writes for regularly. Anyway, um, he had said that this, that this was probably planned by Trump to be abrupt in order to prevent them from taking measures to stop the withdrawal. Yeah. Like that if he, if he waited till the last moment and just said, okay, we're all and leaving, it didn't did give it. anybody time to, to you know, road blocking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and well, that actually seems reasonable to me because they certainly have roadblocked him every tried. time he's tried to do everything else. Yeah. Well, and that, you know, that's something else that Trump talked about on the campaign trail was, um, as far as like making announcements to our enemies when we're doing stuff militarily, mm-hmm. because that's something he complained about with Obama a lot whenever he was in the campaign was that we always tell them exactly what we're going to do before we do it. If I'm commander in chief, we'll just, we'll do what we want to do and yeah. let them respond, you know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's, you know, he makes a good point. Mm-hmm. And what um, Trump, the candidate makes a good point. <laughs> now I can't really take credit for this prediction because it was really the only thing that could have happened. Yeah. Um, but very quickly, the Kurds contacted the Syrian government, Assad's government, and yeah. said, "Hey, we need help." Yeah. And the um, Syrian government has moved forces into northern Syria. Yeah. To help protect to, the Kurds. To do exactly, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. well, maybe not so much to protect the Kurds as to protect their own border, but either way. Either way. The <laughs> you know. same means to an end. Yeah. Um, now, uh, after the uh, this White House meeting, there's this White House meeting that everybody um, made a big deal out because uh, Trump said that uh, Pelosi had a meltdown and Pelosi said that Trump had a meltdown and, like, who knows. 
Um, the only the, thing that I... The memes from that have been hilarious, yeah, by the way. I haven't seen any of that <laughs> stuff, but uh, I, I can tell you that the one thing that they um, that they talked about that I'm sure happened is yeah. that Trump called her a third-rate politician. <laughs> that, I'm pretty confident, actually happened. Yeah. Uh, the rest of it, who knows? Yeah, um, I can see that. But uh, in their, um, their press... Uh, little thing after the White House meeting, um, Schumer, Schumer said he, he asked what evidence uh, there was that the Turks or Syria would care about ISIS and, and keep these people, um, you know, imprisoned, essentially. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Turks may not, but I, I think most of it is that he's relying on either us not knowing, or it might be that he actually doesn't know. But <laughs> the ISIS is a bunch of Sunni jihadists, yeah. and um, they were trying to overthrow the government of Syria. So I'm pretty sure... That Syria, Syria doesn't want them gonna, loose in their country. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. At the very least. Yeah. Um, another uh, funny little bit that came out of this was, I think it was ABC um, showed footage uh, of the, the Kurds yes. being, you know, devastated by all this gunfire. And it turned out to be footage uh, from a gun show in Kentucky, like yeah. an annual gun show in Kentucky. It, no, it was at <laughs> Knob Creek because I thought about the whiskey when I kept seeing the name pop up. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, man, is that whiskey actually named after that creek, or is the creek named after the whiskey? Which came first was always my question. Um, I would guess it's the creek. But I would I, guess, too, but I don't know. I haven't confirmed. Unconfirmed um, information. <laughs> Uncon- yes. This, it could be fake news. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> um, and so I, I did get a kick out of this, because when I first saw this thing, I was like, why is there an audience in that third shot? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and it amazes me that, AB, that nobody at ABC... Caught like, that. Yeah, and when when that first came up, I was like, well, that must have been a glitch. They must have just rolled their own footage. But it sounds to me, from what I've seen now that some time has passed, they did that on purpose. And they, they just like, oh, this is good enough war footage as any. <laughs> well, and the amazing thing about it is there's plenty of actual war footage they could have shown. Yeah. I mean, even if you don't take something from the Syria conflict or whatever like Something we've from been an war actual for 20 war. years yeah, there's plenty of war zone footage out yeah there. you can roll some b-roll war footage easily like yeah. there's tons of it. <laughs> yeah. so they ended up with this and what i thought was like damn i gotta go to this gun show this is right like, well that's spectacular. Dude, when I, I said the same thing i was like man that's insane <laughs> <laughs> sounds like fun <laughs> yeah uh oh tracers so. at night yeah. <laughs> so. um so uh, this is uh, this has all been really interesting. I mean, it looks like it looks like we're actually kind of out of there. Yeah. Um, I, I will say though that we're not bringing troops home. No, no. they're just I mean, being moved to other parts. In fact, it. like you pull a few hundred troops out of northern Syria <coughs> and you put a few thousand troops into Saudi Arabia. I was fixed to say uh, the Saudis yeah. are picking those troops up right now. Yep. So um, it, it's not like it was a a big an actual draw. It's not yeah. an actual drawdown. Yeah. And um, as long as we're on that, I mean, at least this is better than what uh, Iraq is dealing with. We, we're now yeah. seeing what happens in the long run when we when the U.S. establishes a government somewhere. Yeah. So uh, in Iraq for the last week or so, um, no, I guess it's been a, maybe two to three weeks now, uh, they've had some pretty, pretty severe protests. Yeah. Um, the Mahdi government is cracking down. Um, they're they're really unhappy there, and they have good reason to be. Um, but although, as I understand it, um, and this was uh, oh gosh, I can't think of the name of the guy I was reading. He's he's on the ground though. He's there, um, but he was uh, writing. I'll come up with it in a minute. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe not. Maybe not. Regardless, yeah, uh, he's he's on the ground there. He said that there have been some mild protests going on, you know, with just like a couple of thousand people for months now. Really, um, and uh, it's just started ramping it, up. Yeah, they started. They tried to move across a bridge or something, and then the uh, Iraqi security forces started firing on them with rubber bullets and tear gas and um, water yeah. cannons, and then live fire, and that's when it really erupted. And then people started really yeah. instead of that calming it down, it just escalated. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now uh, I also so I read this really interesting um, article from um, Bernard at uh, Moon of Alabama, yeah. and I, I recommend this blog. Like it's really interesting. He's like a, a retired German intelligence officer or something like that, hmm. um, and just seems to comb all kind of news. Yeah. And he puts up an article just about every day, and they're 
they're intriguing and yeah. a lot of times they're insightful and he's pulling news from since he's you know in the heart of Europe yeah he's pulling news from sources that we don't really see a lot yeah um but uh he wrote an article about this that this was another uh US um orchestrated coup d'etat uh, yeah. Now, I don't know that I can entirely buy on with this, especially with the other reporting that I, I've heard, but yeah. I don't fault anybody for blaming the CIA for any kind of <laughs> um, right. any kind of protests anywhere in the world. Uh, it certainly seems to be the way that it goes. And he was citing uh, their, their reports out of there that snipers on the roof are, are shooting at both protesters and defense forces, yeah. uh, which is something that was definitely done in Ukraine yeah. um, in the Maidlan or however you say that uh, protest that started the whole Ukraine conflict. Yeah. Um, and we were obviously we involved were, in that. Yeah. Uh, no question that we were involved in that. Yeah. Um, but uh, he said that the protests really began in earnest after um, Lieutenant General Abdul Wahab Al Saudi. Now, part of the reason I like to report on these is because these names are fun to these say. Names are, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, Abdul Wahab Al Saudi was uh, removed. Um, he was uh, the head of their like shock troop group, their counter counterterrorism group. Yeah. Um, who uh, he was U.S. trained officer, and he worked really closely with U.S. forces um, in this. He was moved to a desk job uh, by the prime minister. And his name is uh, Adel Abdel Mahdi. Um, and so he saw this as a demotion and uh, refused to accept it. Uh-huh. And um, there had been some suspicions that he was, uh, he was part of a group that was looking to overthrow the Mahdi government, uh, which may have instigated the move or yeah. who knows. Yeah. Anyway, I, I actually I recommend people go to Moon of Alabama and look up the article on Iraq is from maybe two weeks ago, week and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, it's worth a read. Like I said, I can't really say that I Not buy into support, everything, yeah. but um, but it was really interesting. It's an interesting thought experiment, if nothing else. Uh, regardless of, of what, you know, of whether we're involved or not, they're certainly having trouble. Um, they, yeah. uh, the people have good reasons to be upset uh, they have a very corrupt government. Yeah. Um, their uh, you know government services aren't delivered um, well, properly saw, or on time. They have limited electricity and water. They're, I was like, fixing to say I saw some numbers or not numbers but um, some statistics or something on how many people were displaced. And it's like mm-hmm. over half the population is just like completely displaced from their homes, like just in. Not where they're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, well, you know? I mean, we, we essentially fought a war there from the early 90s to the mid, well, I guess till 2010-ish. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You know, mean, people, and constantly. Yeah. And don't forget, like, there wasn't a break in that war. Yeah. Like, you might think there was during the Clinton years, but there wasn't. But we were no, still dropping bombs. We were bombs. still there, yeah. No, um, absolutely. <clears throat> so. And, uh. So, oh, um, just another point on the like the tick box of the why it might be U.S. involvement in these protests yeah. is that Mahdi has really tried to remain neutral in the whole um, Iran Saudi Arabia U.S. thing, yeah. um, and he has in fact continued uh, commerce with Iran yeah. um, during this time. Ah, and, yeah. well, there you go. That's yeah. definitely a flag. And, and it is clear that the U.S. is working really hard to. To just strangle Iran of any kind of income yeah. whatsoever. Um, so that that's another, like I said, that's another point for the maybe the U.S. is involved in trying yeah. to overthrow this guy. Yeah. I mean, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Could go either way. Uh, on the whole protest issue, um, things are still going strong in Hong Kong. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. NBA or no NBA, they're still they're still protesting. They're still, still on the streets. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then some more interesting ones is the uh, – do you remember a couple of years ago in Catalonia they had a referendum to leave Spain? You may uh, or may not remember I, this. Vaguely this was like rem- a kind of a big deal at the time. Yeah, I remember something going on about that, but I don't remember a lot of detail. Um, it, it got overwhelming support, but there was a bunch of questions about uh, whether that overwhelming support was because they were threatening dissenters and – um, to not show up at the polls and what have you. And, and yeah, regardless of yeah. what support that. there was of this, like the Spanish government said that it was an illegal referendum. They didn't approve the referendum. There was no way they were going to give up the territory. Yep. Uh, the whole thing was, you know, just kind of bunk from the start. But um, 
the uh, the Catalans have continued to push for their independence. I mean, they're essentially yeah. an uh, you know a separate ethnic group. Um, they have their own language, etc. Yeah. Um, so the these protests have erupted again on the two year anniversary because it was in October 2017 that the oh, original. So that referendum. was two years ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the uh, they're protesting the fact that the Spanish government ignored what they consider to be an illegal referendum in October 2017, yeah. um, and the uh, at the same time the Spanish government actually. Uh, sentenced um, uh, politicians and activists, uh, like a dozen of them, um, nine of them for sedition in their role. Right, because they they arrested a bunch of them. They yeah. had them in jail. That's right. Yeah. So they they have yeah. now sentenced them for like around a decade. Really. Um, which has just really really Riled flared up, up this yeah. this uh, protests again. Um, so uh, because of these long prison terms, that you know there are some. Um, some exiles essentially that that made a huge deal out of it in the press and um, and, and you know so the these uh, guys who had been politicians like Spain dissolved the government of Catalan Catalonia oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, after this referendum you know well, two no, years ago it was a big deal because a bunch of them left the country and then a bunch more went into basically the people who stayed got arrested and went to jail and the ones who didn't like left the country and fled to where they could be, where they could be safe. Mm-hmm. I guess not have to go to jail. Well, and they'd given uh, the Spanish government had given them some freedom to govern themselves, yeah. and then they kind of took it away. Yeah. Um, and they <laughs> now Spain argues that uh, that referendums, referenda, referendums. <laughs> anyway, referendum. um, on self determination violate the crown's rights to the territory. Yeah. Right. So this is a parliamentary monarchy. I had to look that up because I was like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess in a lot of ways, it's similar to the British Crown, although the British Crown doesn't have as much of a role in politics as the as the anymore um, yeah. as the king in Spain does. Okay. So um, while the the monarch doesn't have executive power in Spain, um, they they do recommend and appoint. Or remove uh, ministers of parliament, including oh. the prime minister, yeah. um, as well as calling elections and summoning or dissolving the parliament. So they actually have quite a bit of authority when it comes down to it. Because yeah, well, they're not the ones that are actually involved in making the legislation and, and um, exercising these powers. They, have they a appoint lot of all say. the people that do. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Well, and they and they can remove them, and that's kind of the big deal. Is yeah. that, I mean, if, if I, all they have to do, do is be like, hey, you know, we'll have you removed. You don't do what we want to. Do, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly and so, so um last night which would be friday night um yeah. october 18th yep um the protests got violent um Interesting. and uh so the the people that want to separate the catalonian leaders the protest leaders were uh were demanding that the spanish government um you know hold some talks with them to see how this is going to move forward and spain rejected uh the idea of talks and um, some of these leaders are claiming that there's no way to avoid another referendum, but no. the Spanish government certainly doesn't have any interest in doing a referendum. Hmm. And uh, similarly, at the same time, we have the Brexit debacle. Yes. Now, go back and listen to our Brexit ep- episode, because yeah. what is happening now is exactly <laughs> what we said was going to happen four months ago or something yep. like that. Um, so they uh, on, on Thursday, that's the 17th of October... Uh, um, John Paul Juncker and uh, Boris Johnson announced to the world that they had made a new deal and they had solved the Irish backstop problem by uh, making Ireland, Northern Ireland, some kind of special status where it was like both in the EU market and in the UK market. And like is yeah. weird and confusing. But anyway, they said <laughs> they solved this problem um, and uh, that they finally had this deal. And there was uh, some stuff in the UK that they had made some rules about um, that if there was no new deal created, uh, that they couldn't just crash out, that he, he would have to, like Boris Johnson, had would to have, have to, to request another extension. Yeah. Now, also remember, this has been going on for three and a half years now. Oh, yeah. 
And I'm telling you, Boris Johnson doesn't seem like the type that's going to go for another extension. Like I think, I think they'll lock him up before that happens. Well, it's funny you should say that because this is where it leads. Oh, okay. Um, but the you know the referendum was three and a half years ago. The uh, to leave the EU won 52 percent to 48 percent. It was a close yeah. vote, but a majority, but a majority vote, voted to leave the EU. Yeah. Um, and they're making all kinds of claims now. Well, the you know that was a bunch of old people, and a lot of them died, and <laughs> and so we need a new referendum to represent the people that are actually here. Of course, they were all predicting that that yeah. that would never pass anyway that oh, they were yeah. never going to leave the EU all the polls said it wasn't even going to be close because it was, it was a waste the same of time. way as with the Trump election exactly that you know it was it went the complete opposite direction yeah so um, they they voted today or they're voting today um, it may not be done yet yeah. uh, they're supposed to vote today um, the UK Parliament on yeah. This new deal of okay. Boris Johnson's. Yeah. Um, now, they have had a vote today, but it wasn't about the new deal. Yeah. <laughs> what they voted for uh, was what they're calling the Letwin Amendment, as one of these MPs uh, proposed this amendment um, that says if they don't pass, that if Boris Johnson isn't able to push this deal through today, then he is again required to. Uh, request an extension. an extension because the original rule was that if he didn't, if he wasn't able to make a new deal, he could, he had to request an extension. Yeah. Well, he made a deal. Yeah. So now they've they've added this. <laughs> so they've hedged. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so they they've added this to make sure that he still has to request. Yeah. Um, a. a uh, I do. An extension yeah. um, instead of just crashing out with no deal if yeah. they don't vote for this one, which was yeah. originally the option. Like, okay, yeah. so we've got this new deal, solves the Irish problem that everybody was complaining about. Yeah. Um, and there's some other concessions from the EU, too. I, I didn't detail them all, but yeah. um, you can look them up. There's a, there's a few other things. They added 60-something pages to this already 500-page <laughs> deal. Um, yeah. And... Uh, so it was going to be when he made this new deal, they either vote for this deal or if they vote it down, then they leave with no deal on October 31st. Okay. Which, was the, which is like their fourth extension already or something like that. Yeah. Um, so now they have voted, but not on the new deal. They voted on this amendment <laughs> to say that if they don't vote for the new deal, that he still has to request an extension. That's insane. Right. And that won 322 to 306. Okay. So it was close. Yeah, that's what they decided on. So what it's what it looks like is going to happen, and of course after they they voted on this, um, Johnson said that he was not going to ask for another extension. Extension. Yeah. He's like, you can't make me ask for another extension. I'm not going to do it. This well, doesn't help anybody. That's been his position. I didn't know if he had changed positions, but I know originally that's what he had said. Is that yeah. that I mean, and because they were pushing the issue, and that they may actually like lock him up. Yeah. Well, uh, that may or may not happen. He has relented since then. It's the yeah. news I heard right before we came in here. Yeah. Um, and uh, he he says that um, that he'll send uh, the EU their request for an extension later today. Yeah. Um, for another three months till January 2020, end of January 2020. Um, and wow. uh, and meanwhile, there are thousands of people. They say tens of thousands, but they didn't show me any shots to convince me of that. Yeah. Um, but they, they say that there are tens of thousands of people um, out in London protesting, uh, asking for a new referendum, Yeah. Um, which is what they all want yeah. in the end. I mean, yeah. all these people that are opposed to it and so forth, there's just a, a strong movement of people that don't want to leave the EU. Um, they want to be vassals of the EU forever. Well, and they and, uh, they they feel like I'm sure the people on the the side of of the new referendum have figured out that they've they've spent all these years now with all these scare tactics and doing all these things that they they figure they probably scared enough people that a second referendum will go the way they want. Um, yeah, because I mean they've had all these years and it's it's been nothing but scare tactics the whole time. And this is back to the thing that we've talked about before, which is this illusion of democracy. Yeah. Right? Um, that you have democracy as long as you do things the way that we want you to. Yep. And see, you wasted a bunch of ice. I told you. I'll end up drinking it. It'll melt by the end of the podcast. Okay. Well, that's not what I thought you meant when you said that. But it, um, so it, what happened here is that they didn't want to the, – the UK government didn't want to leave the EU. They didn't expect that the referendum would actually result in the, in a, a Brexit. Yeah. Um, so they put it up and they said, here, you can vote on it because we know you're going to vote to stay in the EU. Yeah. And then when they didn't, yeah. they've done everything – well, first off, the uh, the prime minister stepped down. 
after that happened. Yeah, I remember um, that. Yeah. And he was like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then there has been, like you said, all these scare tactics ever since. I think Theresa May was opposed to leaving the EU. Yeah. I actually think she negotiated a bad deal intentionally. Yeah. Um, Possibly not. She, I mean, she did destroy her career, so it, that might not be the case. But yeah. maybe you know, she was just offering herself up. I'm sure she'll get a good book deal or whatever. Oh, she yeah. probably. It's not like she has correspondence somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. who knows? Um, and uh, so <laughs> I, I think that they intentionally made a bad deal. They've continued with these scare tactics, trying to push people over. Um, they didn't want to leave the EU because the UK government, like, they just have less responsibility if they're part of the EU. Yeah. Um, they get paid the same and they don't have to do it. They as don't much. have to deal with it, yeah. Uh, so, um, what I, I still think will end up happening is that they'll put it off um, to January this time. Then maybe they put it off again to the end of 2020. Yeah. Um, or maybe not. Yeah. Um, they're definitely not leaving without a deal. I doubt they're leaving with this deal. I doubt they're leaving at all. They'll end up doing another referendum at some point. They'll get the votes the way they wanted, and they say, see, democracy at work. Yep, exactly. You finally voted the way we wanted you to, so we can accept this result. Exactly. Yeah. And then it will be the end of the fight. Um, but I think that this uh, you know, Catalonia and the Brexit thing kind of speaks to something else, um, and, and that's back to the self-government idea. Yeah. Uh, like I am, a, I am a big believer in secession movements. Um, I think that if you don't want to be a part of this group that you have joined yourself to, you can leave. Yeah, Um, especially if your community has decided that. I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. You know, if if you if your your local government or how and define local as big as you want, Mm -hmm. state government, you know, whatever, yeah, has made the decision that it's time to go. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's time to go. Yeah, you entered into a contract, and you can leave a contract. Absolutely. Um, you know, and there, if you aren't allowed to leave, then what is that relationship? Exactly. <laughs> um. So, uh, let's see. I guess that's that's all I really have on that. I did. <laughs> I did want to talk a little bit about the debate. Oh, yeah. I it's forgot. This, they uh, did have a debate this past week, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, there was a new Democrat debate. It was terrible. Um, I watched most of it. At some point, yeah. like, I just couldn't. I couldn't do it I anymore. can't tell. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. I did hit to some highlights and, and found out what went, some of what went on. But it's it's hard for me to watch those things. I mean, normally I try to watch the whole thing, but I, yeah. I didn't with this one. I uh, there were some things that I found interesting about it. Um, first off, there's this really common response that whenever they're asked a question that they don't want to answer, that all of them will say something along the lines of, "Well, what we really need to concern ourselves is removing Trump from office." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never and, mind, <laughs> you know the details behind that. Yeah, don't worry <laughs> about what I'm going to do about X, Y, or Z, or you yeah. know how I respond to you know corruption charges leveled against me. Yeah, what we really need to focus on. Yep, is removing Trump from office. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry about my positions as long yeah. as we get Trump out of there. Yeah. Which is, I plan to enslave you all, but don't worry about. <laughs> but that. don't worry about that. Yeah. We'll worry about that later. Right? Yeah. <laughs> First things first. Exactly. Trump yeah. out of office. Yep. Um, I also noticed that Biden doesn't ever actually say anything. No. Nothing at all. It, it's, it's look, this is the deal, okay? <laughs> this is how it is. Yeah. Look. I, yeah. I mean, it's just like all these... It's all these filler words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't ever actually say anything. It's, yeah. kind of a, it's kind of amazing. Like, how has this guy been the front runner this whole time? And then yeah. I think, well, maybe that's it. Yeah. Well, and what, and it's kind of funny though. Like even when he was running in, um, was it '08 that he ran? I guess it was '08. He was the same way then. Like I mean, he that's just that's just who he is. He's there's not a lot of substance there. I don't think he's very smart. So, and that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> well, but yeah, you don't have much to worry about because I highly doubt he's going to be your nominee. Oh yeah, me me too. Um, it would be kind of funny if he was, though. It it would be an interesting race. It will be interesting to see who comes out. I know that, um, I guess, Warren's ahead in the polls now. Yeah. But, man, I just don't see how she that She doesn't plays. say a whole lot either. Yeah. Well, Her but, thing is, so, look. That's <laughs> yeah. how she starts everything. <laughs> is that her start off? Yeah. 
Um, now, Biden did say at one point when they were talking about Trump yeah. uh, that um, this withdrawal from Syria is – this withdrawal from Syria is yeah. the most shameful presiden- presidential act in history. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's – I mean, I, that's that's I a high bar. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like, clearly, this is worse than Iran Contra. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, or I, I don't know. I, I got something more to say about that. And so, this is one of those things that keeps coming up. This is one of those talking points that keeps coming up. That it just this one is amazing to me. I'm I'm gonna rant a little here. All right. Um, rant so away. The, this, I think, I would say misconception that. Trump is somehow worse than his predecessors. Yeah. All right. Well. Go ahead. I'm just going to say part of the problem there is they have everything turned up to 10 when it comes to Trump. Like Mm. it's always just maxed out whatever the outrage of the day is. It's always just the worst thing ever. And that's kind of the problem is that when everything's the worst thing ever, Nothing is the worst thing ever. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. It's just like a whole bunch of noise. It's at some just point. it just becomes noise at some point. And and it's just it's just a talking point. And I have a couple of them that I wrote down here. These things that keep coming up um, that are just absurd. Yeah. And this is one of them. But the whole impeachment thing that they're going to impeach him for uh, this phone call with Vladimir Zelensky that somehow this. Thing and they keep conflating it with the leaving Syria. Like I, yeah. I don't know what that has to. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, but the this is the thing that they're going to impeach him on. And you know what? I think Trump should be impeached. Yeah. Uh, but not for this. Right. This is this is stupid. This is yeah. this isn't a real issue. It's I don't, I can't see that there's anything illegal in what he did. I read the the transcript or the memo on the call. It's not really a transcript. Yeah. There's nothing there. No. I mean, there's some things that you can infer, not. but there is a. Um, like every time a president of the United States interacts with any other foreign leader, yeah. there is a threat of force. Yeah, I, I think that that's just a fact at yeah. this point. Like, and so if you're talking about impeaching somebody for, um, you know, intimidating other foreign leaders into doing what you want, yeah. then every president from now till the end of time needs to be impeached because that's just going to happen. They won't yeah. last a day, yeah. not a single one of them. If that's what, if this is the bar for impeachment at this point, yeah, and. What I would say is that, like, if you want to impeach him, impeach him. Impeach him for this illegal war in Yemen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a good one. We're right. participating in a genocide in Yemen. And it's an illegal war. Nobody ever voted for it. Um, but here's the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the problem is that that is a crime of state. Yeah. Um, they're not going to impeach him for a crime of state. They're going to impeach him for personal crimes, just like yeah. they did with Clinton. Yeah. Right? They could have impeached Clinton for dropping bombs in Iraq all that time. Yeah. Right? Um, but instead, they impeached him for lying to a grand jury. At least yeah. that was a real crime, though. <laughs> yeah. At uh, least you know, he actually did something. <laughs> perjury in front of a grand jury is a real crime. Now, what it was about was kind of, you know, malarkey. Insane, yeah. Um, but, like, they'll, they'll never impeach a president for a crime of state because they're all complicit. Well, I was going to say, if, if you start... <laughs> If you make proceedings against Trump for that, you've got to go back and look at at least yeah. Obama. Yeah, and Bush. Obama started that war. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to placate the Saudis after the Iran uh, nuclear deal. Exactly. Um, and so it, it started with him, and that's why they won't do it. Is because first off, they can't bring up Obama because he's the savior. Yeah. Um, but secondly, because it's a crime of state, and yeah. they won't go after a president for a crime of state. Those things are completely ignored. Yeah. Um, like they're just all they're all they're all bad. Yeah. Like every single president has done something really terrible that could be impeached for, but yeah. they were all crimes of state, and so they won't touch them about it. Yep. Um, do you remember when, uh, like back to the Clinton thing? Um, you know, you impeach him for perjury. Uh, meanwhile, he's dropping bombs in Iraq, or you could have impeached him for his response to the whole impeachment inquiry when he started dropping bombs in Eastern Europe instead. Yeah, he did. Uh, as a I distraction. forgot about that. He did do that. <laughs> He sure enough did. But uh, do you remember when Madeleine Albright sat there on 60 Minutes and they asked her, um, there's been UN reports that uh, up to a half a million Iraqi children have died as a result of our sanctions. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel that that's an acceptable cost uh, to remove Saddam Hussein from power? And she looked right at the camera and said, yes, we feel that's an acceptable cost. Now, me personally, yeah. I don't think half a million children dead is an acceptable cost for like for anything. anything. Yeah, anything, anything at all. These yeah. are all terrible people. Yep. They're all terrible people. 
Yep. I, I don't think that you can rise to that level of power without being a terrible person. Certainly not in, the, in this country no. at this point. I mean, yeah. it may have been true a long time ago, but I, I bet you could go through not everybody in that. History. Yeah. yeah. I, I could. I bet you could go through everybody in a leadership position in the federal government, and you could count on one hand the number of people that are actually good people. Yeah, I'd agree with that. So, like this idea that Trump is somehow worse than all these other people, he's not. No, he's yeah. not. He's not even close. No, I, I would wholeheartedly agree. And the fact and that I we don't like him. <laughs> no, I know, right? <laughs> I find him entertaining. I'll I find say him that. entertaining too. But I, I think he's a despicable person. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely agree with that. But, so. you know, here we are. I, like, yeah. um, when I was uh, out campaigning for myself on Election Day a couple of years ago when I was when I was yeah. running for office, um, I had this guy stop on his way out of the polling booth. So I was free and clear as far as that. He'd already voted whatever he was going to vote for, and so it didn't matter what I said. Although I, I'm not one to pander you're anyway. Not going, yeah, you're not, <laughs> I, I you're told not people exactly what I thought about everything no. anyway. I walked around with you. You tell them exactly <laughs> what you think. Yeah. Good, bad, or ugly. Yeah. You're getting the truth. <laughs> so this guy asked me what I thought of Donald Trump. Yeah. And um, it, it became clear to me really quickly that what I was supposed to say was, he's the most terrible, awful person that has ever inhabited the White House and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. So, yeah. you know just like the Ramped worst thing up ever. to 10. Yeah. Um, we go to 11. No. <laughs> uh, and I, that's not what I told him. I was like, eh, you know, it's a mixed bag. Yeah. Um, there's some things that he's pushing for that I approve of, and there's some things that he's pushing for that I don't. Um, and frankly, if he can put an end to any of the wars that we're involved in and not start another one, I'll consider this a success. Yeah. Like all those other things, you know. Kind of goes to the side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so if he reduces regulation, great. Um, if he starts the trade war, which he ended up doing, yeah. then that's pretty awful. I'm, I'm absolutely yeah. opposed to that. But if he stops any of these wars, I'm going to be pretty content. Yeah. And, and the reason for that is because if he stops any of these wars, it will save lives. Yeah. American lives and lives in general. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if you're on the side of saving lives, that's kind of where you have to be. And okay, so that and that pushes us on to one of those other things, right? Yeah. Um, so there was lots of talk about. Uh, oh gosh, were they talking about the? I guess they were talking about the medical companies in this particular point. But they were talking about how um, these medical companies had made billions of dollars in in. Uh, actually, I think they were saying billions of dollars in revenue, which is not the same as profit. Oh, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I but, think they. I think they said profit. Well, maybe it was. I think they. I Either think way. they used the term. I may yeah. be wrong. I Either way, wrong. Um, I think the number that Bernie gave was something like the top ten companies uh, made sixty nine billion dollars in profit. Yeah, that's a total, by the way. So they were making about seven billion dollars a, a piece, a, roughly. Individually, yeah. um, and so whenever they, whenever they talk about these banks making billion dollars, billions of dollars in profit, or these medical companies, you know, pharmaceutical companies, or insurance companies, or any of these other groups of people that they've demonized making billions of dollars in profit, just remember that your federal government collected three and a half trillion dollars from the taxpayer last year <laughs> that they earned none of, yeah, because yeah. they didn't do anything for it. Exactly. Um, and if you have any questions, I mean, like. And, These and, complaints about businesses earning tens of billions when the government is forcibly taking trillions of dollars from us seems yeah. more than a little bit hypocritical to me. And no joke. And especially when you remember that that's money that's taken out of the system and just put to frivolous use, a lot of which is just being blown up in another side of the world. Yeah. Uh, out of that Literally. three and a half trillion. Now, so they, they collect three and a half trillion and they spend yeah. four and a half trillion. Well, yeah. And yeah. a trillion of that is spent on the war state. Yeah. yeah. Literally being blown up across yeah. the planet. Um, uh, one fourth of every tax dollar that you commit hmm. is spent on the war state. Yep. And think about whether you approve of that. Yeah. And even if you approve of some of it, do you approve of all of it? Do you approve of all of it? Because do you approve of our war in Somalia, yeah. in Mali, in Yemen, in Syria, in Libya? I yeah. mean, Afghanistan, Iraq. Yeah. We are all over the place. We're all over North Africa. We're all over the Middle East. Yep. We are everywhere. Blowing up money and people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way you have to look at it. Yeah. I mean, 
It's just the way it is. And so, and Booker at one point said made this like really profound statement, but he totally misused it. Yeah. He said, "We are sacrificing our freedoms to fear." And he was talking about um, that. Uh, he was talking about it in terms of promoting firearms um, <laughs> bans and restrictions. Yeah. And I thought, well, like that's just upside down. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like you've pumped enough fear into us. That you're trying to convince us to sacrifice our freedoms. Yeah. But he, that's not what he meant that's by it. That's not how he took it. Yeah. 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 And I, I just... So, it was a very frustrating thing to watch. There was a point where Yang um, said that we should learn from the mistakes of other countries. And I thought, well, like Cuba, the Soviet Union. Yeah. Like, what countries Venezuela? Are you, <laughs> what countries are you talking about? Because yeah. um, all like a lot of your Which, programs seem to have already been tried and failed miserably. And that's something that he's not wrong about. Like I'm all for taking oh, yeah. a look at what hat, what other countries and and I think that's a good look in the state test for states too. Like let other states do what they want to do, especially like with minimum wage and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. If your state wants to do that, let them do it. And if it works yeah. for y'all, great. But and otherwise everybody's going to move to the neighboring state. Exactly. And they've seen that like in um in a bunch of places where they've done these minimum wage things. Yeah. Uh, I think Seattle was a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and uh, at some point, we'll do the other, the Liberty Mike classic on the minimum wage. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll fun. put that one up there. But, you know, one of the things that I predicted at the time, which is more or less borne out, and this was, that was recorded two years ago or something. A long time ago, um, yeah. Is that what would happen is a city like Seattle would bump their minimum wage up to $15 an hour. Yeah. Now, it would drive up prices in the city all over the place. And so what would happen is that people would commute to Seattle yeah. to work. Yep. Like, so they'll work for $15 an hour and then they'll go out. Drive and, home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Drive somewhere else where things are cheaper yep. uh, to live. And that the people that were living in Seattle would all end up moving out. Like they would all spread out to other places. Same thing yeah. in New York. Like you, you live in New Jersey and you work in New York city is what you'll do. Yeah. And if you're not working in New York city, you can't afford to live in New York city. So yeah. they lose their tax base. Exactly. And that's largely what happened in Seattle. I think the big thing that happened in the Seattle too, is like the restaurant industry like collapsed because oh, yeah. they just, they can't, they can't work on those margins. Yeah. I mean, they just, they can't do it. Well, and grocery stores, I suspect too, they have yeah. really low margins as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, so yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Not I, to rabbit hole us, but we just got to talking about Yang. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's like, I, I don't know. He's kind of foolish. I, that's another thing. I may have mentioned this on the podcast before, but him standing up in front of everybody and saying, and saying, um, if you vote for me and I win the presidency, I'm going to give every single one of you $1,000 a month. How is that not a bribe? Yeah, exactly. And and you can, you can and that's all – I mean, he's just naked about it. He's, yeah. He just has it out in the open. But they all do that. They're all basically picking these groups and just offering them things for their votes. Mm. And that's part of the reason we're in the situation we're in. Yeah. As far as debted stuff is concerned, is because there's only so much money available. You can only take so much from one place to another before there's not any more. Yeah. Well, what you got to understand is that under modern monetary theory, debts don't matter. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that's the case, why don't we just print all the money and quit taxing all the together? Well, that's what they're doing. Pretty much. Well, yeah. Well, they're, they're still except taking- for the taxes. <laughs> yeah. uh, at least you know. At least some of them admit that their programs will require higher taxes. Like yeah. Elizabeth Warren will never admit she to was, this. Oh no! And I watched. I actually watched a bunch of clips from her where they repeatedly asked her the same question, and she would not give an answer. Yeah, she, she just wouldn't do yeah. it. Um, now, at least Bernie will say Bernie, yeah. 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 Um, but you know. what he doesn't tell you is that if they t- taxed every single dollar yeah. um, that everybody that made over like three hundred thousand dollars a year, if they if they taxed every dollar over three hundred thousand earned in a year, yeah. um, they still couldn't cover these programs. Yeah. Well, I um, think Bernie went as far as to say that everybody's taxes, even the lower income people, mm-hmm. taxes would go up. Yeah. But the, it would be offset by what they they wouldn't have all of these medical costs. So in the end, they would come out ahead. Yeah. That's just not well it, 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 it won't work that way but it, it sounds good though mm-hmm. i mean it's it, you know but you you and i both know the government just doesn't work that way yeah well and i wrote an article i'll see if i can dig it up um i used to work as an emt uh and when i got off the truck i worked in the billing office um, yeah. for the ambulance company that i worked for and 
so we were dealing with Medicare and Medicaid all day long. Yeah. Uh, like constantly. And private insurance companies too. But Medicare yeah. and Medicaid was a lot of a, the business. A lot of business. Yeah. Um, and they were terrible. They were absolutely the most difficult to collect from, Medicare and Medicaid. Oh, yeah. And in fact, the company that I worked for ended up closing its doors because Medicaid owed them something like $350,000 uh, that they were just never going to pay. Couldn't and, collect. and, you know, this is after a court case, like a whole bunch of legal costs trying to get it collected and so forth. And they just kept stonewalling and. Yeah, I mean, eventually the company is like, we can't, we can't well, keep they doing have, this. They have unlimited resources to not pay you. Yeah, well, and and you can't sue the government. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. So, Where are you going to go? And then Medicare, like their thing was that they had what they called a, a allowed costs. Yeah. So presumably, what they did was that they took the average cost of a particular service um, in a region over time and and calculated what the average cost for that service was, and that's what they would pay. Right. Or actually, they would pay 80% of that, but that's what you were allowed to charge, and you <laughs> yeah. had to write off the rest. Oh, wow. And so there were a bunch of services, especially in the ambulance industry, yeah. where what their allowed cost was was less than it cost to actually do the service. Oh, wow. Right? Wow. Um, and, you know, it was really bad in the ambulance because in the southeast, they did it regionally. Yeah. Um, in the southeast, uh, a lot of ambulance services had been run by volunteer fire departments um, and uh, and so forth. So they, were, they calculated all these zeros in for these services for that they areas. didn't charge, yeah. right? And um, oh, wow. and so it ended up in the southeast that the cost uh, or the allowable costs um, for a bunch of ambulance services were like a third to a quarter of what they were in the rest of the country. Wow. Now at this point, obviously in the in the late nineties, um, early two thousands, like all of the providers of all the equipment and and so forth, insurance, everything else. Yeah. They were all national providers. Yeah. So all of those costs, the, the regular costs <coughs> um, for ambulance services, no matter where you were in the country, were essentially the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the only thing that varied from place to place was the cost of labor. Yeah. yeah. And so what so, Medicare, the federal government was saying is that labor in the southeast is worth less than labor anywhere else in the country. Wow. Um, <laughs> And like I said, there were a bunch of services that we ran at a loss. Yeah, uh, you couldn't like you couldn't collect what it cost you to do it to do the job. Um, wow. And so here's what the article was about: is because they were already talking about single payer healthcare at that time. Oh yeah, um, national healthcare at that time. And um, and I, I wrote an article about uh, that. What this would do was it would reduce the quality of medical services across the country. Yeah. Um, because uh, first off, like if you can never make money doing a service, then you just stop offering that service. Uh, like you're, ju you're just not going to do it. Yeah. Um, and that all these uh, people that got into um, the medical field, doctors, like the real professionals, um, the, you know, ones high skilled ones. school, yeah. Yeah. Um, that they weren't going to go into – uh, all this debt to become a doctor so that they couldn't make any money. Yeah. Instead, they were going to go into law school and become an attorney so they could argue medical cases. Right? <laughs> all right. And that's where they would really make money. And so the, the quality of the service would go down yeah. um, because of that too, because you, your best and brightest weren't going to do that aren't anymore. Doing that anymore. Yeah, I mean, there's absolutely. plenty of people that go into, I, and I'm not, this isn't to say that doctors only become doctors so that they can make a bunch of money. Yeah. I, most doctors go into to the field yeah. so that they can help people. Yeah. But they're not going to help people at a loss. Yeah. Like nobody Absolutely. wants to wants to starve gonna, to death helping people. Well, exactly. And I mean these are high skilled people <clears throat> that it takes you want the brightest ones there. Mm -hmm. And they're just not going to go that direction if they know that it's a life of poverty. Yeah. Like why would I spend this much time and effort to mm -hmm. to do this job? I can help people in other ways that make me more money. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cuz they're smart people. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> right? They'll figure it out. <laughs> exactly. Um, I did want to come back real quick because I, I wanted to mention um, the when Biden was talking about this withdrawal being the most shameful act, he went on to say the um, commanders, former and present, are ashamed <sighs> and of this move by Trump. I don't know where he's getting that from because recently I saw a poll yeah. that said uh, essentially two thirds of um, terror war vets think that we should never have gotten involved. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that a bit. And this is the veterans. This is the people that were actually over there. So yeah. the commanders, I, I'm not sure. That's certainly a different group of people. It is. <laughs> but um, yeah. I don't know where he got that information The, the people from. on the ground, though. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then, you know, back to the hypocrisy generally, uh, they, <laughs> you know, they all kept saying that Trump broke the law by seeking to dig up dirt on his opponent. 
Yeah. And so what we are going to do is we're going to start an inquiry and investigation in order to dig, dig up, up dirt, dirt on our opponent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, exactly. Do they not hear themselves? No, they, they don't. And the, well, that's what's really bad is when you get to digging into the deal with Biden, too, mm-hmm. you find out that Biden did the same thing Trump did. Yeah. So he's just as guilty yeah. as Trump. Well, and, uh, you know, if you're going to complain about Trump contacting a foreign government and saying, hey, can you look into this for me, um, is is that actually worse than the Obama administration using our own intelligence services to investigate the Trump campaign during the campaign? During the campaign. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's all on record. Yeah. From, from the Russia collusion thing. So, so I don't know. I, I just, the whole thing's just absurd. It's because they hate this guy. Yeah, it, that's all it is. And it's because he's an outsider. It, it's not yeah. even... And it's because he's willing to... To... Push the envelope. He's going to do what he wants to do. Put his neck out there and maybe end one of these wars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Costs a lot of people a lot of money. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's where it always comes back to the money. Um. So, a couple of the other... I don't know. I guess you'd just say memes at this point of things that keep coming up. Stupid talking points. Um. You know, the Kurdish allies... Yeah. On that particular point, you know, these Kurdish allies, like they were an ally of convenience. They were already fighting ISIS. Uh, we just went in there and gave them money yeah. and guns. And uh, and really, the previous administration that signed these deals with the Kurds are the ones who are to blame there. Yeah. Like we shouldn't have, if, if we really cared about the Kurds that much, we should have let them side with the Syrians and left it alone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, Tulsi actually mentioned that. Did she? Um, yeah. yeah, she said something about that. You know, we stopped them from allying with the Syrian government before, and we should have led them. Yeah, um, absolutely. But uh, you know, the other thing that nobody talked about yeah. in this whole thing um, was our NATO allies, the Turks. <laughs> yeah, right. Funny <laughs> like, how they're just kind of left out of the equation um, here. I, I posted an article uh, from David Stockman the other day on our Facebook page. I recommend you read it if you haven't. Like, it was pretty entertaining. David Stockman's an entertaining writer anyway, but there was, like, he really breaks it down in a really interesting way and talks about how we were, uh, you know, initially we were arming ISIS um, and because we wanted them to overthrow the Syrian government. And that's another thing that this all comes back to. We we recognize at this point that, like, as this goes on, it becomes clearer and clearer that there was never... Like, we were never at war in Syria in order to fight ISIS. We were at war in Syria to overthrow Assad. Exactly. And we're still at war in Syria to overthrow Assad. And Obama came out and said that at one point during his presidency. That 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 was what we were there to take care of Assad. Well, there was a bunch of open door meetings in Congress where they talked about it openly. But since nobody watches C-SPAN, it was like, it was fine. Nobody remembers. Yeah, there were like 3,000 people that saw that. (laughs) Right. Nobody wants to listen to them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the Stockman breaks down how we were, we were arming ISIS um, or the Sunni jihadists, we'll just yeah. say it like that, um, until they got out of our control. Yeah. And then we were arming the Turks um, and we were arming the Kurds and we were arming the, and funding the Turks because they're our NATO ally and they were helping to support ISIS while we were helping to support ISIS. Yeah. Um, and then when ISIS got out of control, they continued to support ISIS, but we can understand their confusion, right? Because <laughs> like we'd been asking them to do that before. Yeah. Um, and then we were arming and, and supporting the Kurds, but we were arming and supporting the Kurds before that too, because they were fighting against the Syrian government, which is our real enemy Which there. is who we were trying to take down. Yeah. And uh, in the end, so we're, we're funding... ISIS, we're funding the Kurds, we're funding the Turks. All of these groups are sometimes allies, sometimes enemies. And in the end, we get three groups of people who are all fighting with each other, and we're arming all three of them. Yeah. Like, it's it's just insane, man. (laughs) This is our foreign policy. Yeah. um, That costs us a trillion dollars a year. And uh, and then the last thing was the NRA. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the NRA is this bad guy that just wants everybody to have a gun in their pocket and and so forth. I wish like, that was the case. Yeah, no kidding. That would be, I would support that. I'd NRA. support them. Yeah. Um, you know the the actual NRA is about what they would call, I think, common sense gun reform. Yeah, no, um, it's true. And uh, there's a lot of things that the NRA supports that I absolutely wouldn't. That are infringement yeah. of the Second Amendment. Absolutely. Um, so I don't I don't know how they get away with like making the NRA the bad guy and all of this all the time. 
but it's a it's a tired talking point. I, yeah. Like I'm ready for them to move on and say something new. Yeah. Um, but I guess this works. I, I mean, that's I suppose the reason that, they, that's the reason they do it. You know, um, yeah. they were playing a uh, a clip from some podcast on the other podcast that I listened to, yeah. uh, the No Agenda Show. I was listening to today. Um, it was about uh, <coughs> the rapper Chance. Is that right? Maybe. Uh, is I think it was the this rapper. I think it was Chance and Cardi B. Okay. Um, and funny. they were talking about um, politics stuff, and Cardi B was just going on and on about how people don't uh, people vote with their emotions. They vote with their feelings. Um, they don't know what these uh, candidates stand for, um, and they don't care. And <laughs> unfortunately, I think she's, she's right. absolutely right, she's and absolutely that's why this right. stuff works. It is. That's exactly why. Well, so, and your average person, not so much the people that would listen to this Yeah, show. anybody listening to this podcast is better informed than like 95% of the American public. Exactly. Because no, most people, they tune in a little bit come election time, and just like you say, they vote with their emotions. Yeah. They don't, they don't or, think about things logically. Or what they look like. I, I remember yeah. seeing um, you know man on the street kind of interviews in Canada uh, after the Justin Trudeau was elected, yeah. and people were asking you know what's the reason that you voted for Justin Trudeau? And I swear that the most common word yeah. um, used in responses in those interviews was hair. Hair, really? Yeah, really. Yeah, because he's got nice hair. He has nice hair. Well, imagine that. <laughs> that's worthy of voting a man as a prime minister, uh, right? I'm, I'm just saying, like, if that's the if that's the stick right now, Tulsi should be at the top of the polls. I'm just saying. You like that little gray? <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just putting that out. What about there. mine? Well, you, you got a little much. <laughs> Too much gray hair. Yeah. I still got a little bit of black right on the edge. You do. Yeah. Not for long, though. It goes fast. Yeah, imagine how that happens. Well, that's as good a place as any to finish, I suppose, um, with uh, Gary insulting my hair. <laughs> and uh, so in until next time, um, you know, follow us on Facebook, uh, iTunes, Podbean. I don't know if you follow exactly on Podbean, but you can subscribe on iTunes and Podbean. Yep. Um, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you know, we're trying to post like and, more. Like and share on Facebook, especially when we share stuff. Like, if, if you like it, share it. Like, I mean... Because yeah. that that goes a long way. It gets the it gets the page exposure, and that's what we need right now. And positive reviews on both iTunes and Podbean are helpful also as help. well. Yep. Um, so. I mean, you can review it however you want, but we would prefer we obviously positive prefer reviews. positive. Yeah. I, I'm uh, certainly willing to hear criticisms, so you can contact me and Michael at the Liberty Mike um, if you have any questions, criticism, suggestions, whatever. Show topics. Um, yeah. Yeah, if Always. something's going on in your area that you think that we should maybe cover, let, Send it let us to know. Us. Yeah, uh, we'll can't look keep into up it. with everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, so, you know, all those things: like and share, subscribe, positive reviews, you know, good thoughts, yeah. whatever. Positive um, vibes. And uh, we'll we'll try and be back to you in about a week, maybe less. Maybe more. It, it depends on how <laughs> the schedules really hard go. hard to tell right now. A lot of things <laughs> um, going on. And uh, so uh, join us again next time when we finally get this right. Um, in the meantime, try and stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later. <laughs>